Welcome. My name is Dana Brown and I'm Sojo's Director of Marketing. In this tutorial today, we're going to see an example about how we can use the handle URL event in our Zojo Web 2.0 apps. We're going to do this so they can load the desired web page or data as the response to the requested path in the URL. You may think about it as the web app answering to an API verb as part of the provided URL. In this case, as we're creating a very simple example, we're providing the text one as part of the URL path, so the web app loads that particular web page as a response. As you can see here, our web app is executed locally, and the provided options are one, two, and three. And in every case, the app loads the expected web page based on that component of the URL path. So how did we do this? If we look into the code for the example project, the app object is the only one that can implement the handle URL event handler. It's in this event where we get the request received by the web app, and it has part of the request, the path property, which is the one storing the data at the right outside of the slash character in the provided URL. If we receive an empty string, then that means that there is no data, so we exit from the event handler. Otherwise, that would mean that we have some data to process. In this case, we assign the full path data to the tpath variable, and then we do some cleaning to delete the end slash in the case that the path ends with that character. In the next line of code, you can see that we are creating a new instance from the path received class, providing the contents of the path in the constructor. If we look into the path receiver class, you can see that it is a really simple one, just the constructor, a property, and a method to retrieve the property. Of course, you probably would want to improve this one or make your own class to deal with paths that better fit your needs. As you can see, the public method root simply returns the data stored in the mroot property. Going back to the handle URL event handler, once we created the new path receiver instance referenced by the path received variable. And we only need to modify the location attribute in the header property of the response parameter so it points to its own web address. That is the host where the web app is running. And also sets 302 as the status number for the status property of the response parameter, returning true from the event handler. By the way, the 302 status value is a redirection code. Also important, path receiver is a property added to the app object itself, as you can see here. After that, when the initial web page is loaded, in this case, it's the home web page, the shown event handler will check if the path received is not nil, which means that we have a path route to process. In this case, and because it's a simple project, we are using a select case statement to check the value of the stored root in the object. So if it is empty, it will exit and continue loading the page. Otherwise, it will show the web page associated with the path value. After this, it will simply set the path received property to nil. And that's all. I hope this video was helpful. Please smash that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel for notifications when a new video is posted. And if you have comments, please post them and we'll answer any questions that you have as well. Bye.